Hey guys, it's Cam again, continuing the series on digital painting and Photoshop for HowToDigitalPaint.com. This is episode 3, and I'll just go through a few basic functions. We'll be going through setting up a new document, saving, uh, pan and zoom functions, the different view modes, uh, toggling on or off the interface, uh, setting up a new window, and actions. So, I assume you guys already know this, but I'll just go through a few considerations with setting up a new document. So when setting up a new document, there are a range of options. These are the different presets, so they might be for print or for web uh, or different uh, devices. And I guess the main consideration, you you should be aware of is whether it's for print or for web so the standard standard print is 300 pixels per inch or 300 dots per inch DPI and the resolution for on-screen viewing is 72 DPI so you need to consider whether it's going to be you know for print or digital devices I usually work at 300 DPI and that gives me the option to print it if I really like the work but you can always just work at 72 DPI and then if you're happy with it go to image size and change the image size and boost it up to 300 DPI. You'll notice a bit of uh, pixelation or issues with that where it um, where it has to um, resample the image. For, so I would suggest when you blow it up to 300 DPI that you do that earlier in the process and that way it won't look um, so the pixels won't look so distorted from the from the change. There are different colour modes. I usually work in RGB if, even if I'm printing something. But if you want to be really um, cautious about the colours and how they'll be reproduced, choose CMYK colour. But you can always go to CMYK colour later in the process. The problem with CMYK colour is you're going to lose the ability to use many of the adjustment layers and also the filters so that's one consideration I usually work in 8-bit, most, most people do this is to do with the amount of colors but really 8-bit is still millions of colors 16-bit uh, is and double that so um, you're gonna have a lot of memory issues and lag issues unless you've got a, a base computer if you're working 16-bit, but I recommend you just use 8-bit and then you can change the, the background. Uh, color profile, the default is fine, but if you, again, if you're really worried about color, you're going to have those different profiles, and that's more if you're printing. So, yep, yeah, that's, that's it. You can save different presets that you like to work with just clicking here and then making a new one and device central will um, give you an idea of how it will look on different devices which is an Adobe plugin so now saving a document if I want to save this document I go to file save as pretty straightforward but there are some things you might not know um, only PSD and TIFF and I believe PNG um, they're the only formats that will keep keep layers so the best bet is to always say PSD and there are the other formats now if you want to save for posting on forums or devices and just for your website wherever if you go to save for web and devices 
you can you can save this and what that'll do is make your image 72 dpi for for the web and you can change the pixel dimensions so for forums you might have it 700 pixels wide and you can change the quality of the image so you can optimize it and you can change the different formats here so you might want to change it PNG 8 if you want transparencies but this image doesn't have any transparent elements so it's not really relative and there's another format GIF all that okay so that that's that uh, pan and zoom so we can we can already zoom in and to do that we press control plus and control minus is the hot key so control minus is zooming out control plus is zooming in or you can use this zoom tool which is the hot key Z or you can have it on your Wacom tablet which is what I have just using the dial it zooms in, in and out now we you can only pan the image when we're zoomed in you'll notice when I'm zoomed out I can't pan it's just locked it there but if you're zoomed out and you do want to pan press F and that will change the screen mode and then we can pan the image around if you don't want to use the hotkey you can go to view screen mode and then just change here so F will cycle through the different screen modes and the different view modes we just discussed also known as screen modes toggling on and off the interface so if I'm zoomed in and this is getting in the way on my palettes and things I can press tab and that will toggle on or off the interface new window new window is is handy especially if you have dual monitors because you can have an extra window that displays the, the entire image the the navigator has a similar similar thing and we can zoom in or out with the navigator which is nice and you can even punch in numbers to get exact but I prefer to use this so we go window arrange and new window and that way we can have different another window which is maybe at a certain percentage because we want to see what the our image looks like and how our changes that we make when we're zoomed in affect the image as a whole so I might come in and make a mark here and I might think oh that looks great on when I'm zoomed in and then I notice that it looks quite um, vulgar when I see the images as a whole and then we can see how these different layer modes might affect it and you can drag that onto your second monitor if you have one but the the great thing is how it does update when I make changes within this window and it changes them here and you may have noticed I pulled this window out of the tab here so we can drag things in or out the tabs so we can arrange our windows with them my way you desire and I'll just quickly cover actions so with actions they're handy if you are always running different um, functions and you don't want to keep going through the whole list of things all the time so you can record those actions and they will be you can just play them with a click of a button so I've made this little action here which applies an adjustment layer, desaturates and then flips it horizontally and then 
and then it inverts it. So I'll just give you a look at that, what it does. So you can see in an instant it applied all those different functions. So to do that we go new action. You can find the, if you don't already have the actions tab, you can find it in window actions. Okay, so new action, call this test. You can set a hotkey, make it F5. You can set it to Shift F5 or Control Shift F5. Different color. And we can set the folder that it's in if we've made folders. So this action is going to apply a, a filter and then it's going to f um, flip it horizontally and then apply another filter. So we'll just see that in action. So to do that, since we've just made the action, it's now recording. So I can go filter, might apply cutout filter. That's not right. Uh, that wasn't working because it wasn't on the correct layer. So I'll use an adjustment layer because that will affect all the layers beneath. So I might just change the, uh, do a photo filter, warm the image up, add another filter, or, or just uh, flip it horizontally, and add a color balance filter. Okay, so you can see the, those steps I've made have been recorded here. Now we can just stop that. Now it's stopped the recording. Now I can just go back through. And you'll see in an instant by either clicking the hotkey or clicking play with the action selected, it will perform that action in a moment. And you can uh, for example, as, as a suggestion, set actions that will select tools. So I might new action F9 record and it just might select my chalk tool and then stop and then that will be my action for selecting my chalk tool. So rather than always going to the palette here, I can I can select my different hotkeys, you know, my different tools just with the different hotkeys. It's like you're playing an FPS, choosing your different weapons and all that. So yeah, um, make use of these things. They are gonna make your workflow more efficient. And if you, especially if you're making production art, you do want a quick workflow um, to get things out before deadline. So yeah, thank, thanks for watching, hope you learned heaps, and uh, check out more videos, I'm making videos every day, five days a week, and you'll see this series continued on from beginner to advanced in progressive steps, so check him out, howtodigitalpaint.com, I uh, hope you learned heaps, get into painting, and uh, yeah, just have fun with it, see ya.